This program is part of American Graduate, Getting to Work, a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. We have jobs we've accepted, and we don't know if we can fill them. The skills gap is real. We hear constantly from business and industry. For the state of Ohio, what's at risk is us falling behind economically. What type of education system do we need for the digital age? Which may include college, but it doesn't have to include college. These are the jobs of the future. Being done by the workforce of the future. This is their Super Bowl. 3,200 students from every corner of Ohio are competing at the Skills USA State Championship. It's a showcase for students in career and technical education programs and it offers just a glimpse of industries fueling the 21st century workforce. These high school students blow me away every day. You are talking very, very technical programs. Experts say we've arrived at the fourth industrial revolution, and it requires a fusion of hands-on skills and high-tech knowledge. The problem is, not enough people are pursuing the type of education needed to enter these fields. That goes for young people and for adults shifting careers later in life. We have a number of partners that come to us and are, are like, we have 56,000 openings in the next three years for jobs we've accepted, and we don't know if we can fill them. The skills gap is even more urgent once you factor in massive retirement rates of baby boomers. These jobs don't require a four-year college degree, but they do require additional education and training beyond high school. Career and technical education is the first step on that pathway. Experts predict that by the year 2020, 65% of Ohio's well-paying jobs will require highly skilled workers. But right now, fewer than 45% of Ohioans have the right kind of training. In simpler language, it means only four out of every 10 people in the available workforce pool are prepared for the jobs of the future. If you do anything, if you own a home, if you fly, if you drive, if you get sick, you should be worried about this skills gap. These career clusters cover everything from coding to construction, the trades required to build and renovate homes, deliver products from suppliers to customers. They fix your computer when it crashes and service your phone when it fails. They are the technicians who care for you at doctor appointments administer CPR in an emergency, and design, build, and operate robots to increase productivity and improve human safety. These are the skills that will run life. Attracting more students to quality career and tech ed programs is one way to build a highly skilled workforce. But many families still cling to that old bachelor's degree or bust mentality. They think a four-year college degree is the best and only path to success. Because in America, high school to Harvard is the model. It's what everybody wants. No one is saying a four-year college degree is bad. It's just not a one-size-fits-all solution for every student. And it's not a one-size-fits-all solution for the workforce. We now live in a world where a lot depends on what you know and can do and depends less on how much schooling you have. And that is a radical psychological departure for Americans. The majority of in-demand, well-paying jobs in Ohio require a two-year associate's degree, an industry-recognized credential, apprenticeship, or other high-quality specialty training. They can lead to jobs paying forty dollars to $80,000 or more. The more education you get, on average, the better you'll do. But there is a second rule, which is that what you take determines what you make. You can get a certificate in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning and make more than 30% of college graduates. There's another stigma contributing to the skills gap, and it's rooted in a term from the previous century, vocational technical training, AKA 
Votech. Vogue got run out of town and came back with a new name called Career and Technical Education. It is applied learning. It helps kids in academic courses, increases math scores on tests, gets kids to graduate more from high school than they used to, and moves more kids to college. But research shows families still think career and technical education is a place for students who suffer from low academic performance and behavioral problems. Of the nearly half million students enrolled in Ohio's public high schools, about a quarter of them participate in career and tech ed. The idea in a pathway is that it's a highway of a sort. There are continuous options to improve, to get more education or to get a job. There are off-ramps and on-ramps, but there are no dead ends. We need to give these students every opportunity to be successful. Whatever that means, whether that's traditional high school, whether that's career and technical education, all of these students should be able to have that opportunity. It's time to finally get rid of those stigmas. If you want to shed stigmas, step inside the halls of Coleraine High School near Cincinnati. Brittany Ashcraft is a senior there. This is Brittany in Advanced Placement Calculus. Here she is in Honors English. Right now it's at 15. And this is her college level physics class. It's like 25. She's earning college credits for this class before she even graduates from high school. And this is Brittany in her career and technical education class. I like that machining is hands-on and that I can physically hold the product in my hands. I drilled all these holes, I made all these cuts, I sanded all these edges. It was everything I did. She's in the pre-engineering program offered by Butler Tech. It has a satellite location at Colerain. In this classroom for the first time, I'm actually using the math that I learned in my math classes. So all those years that you spend saying, what do we even need this for? It's right here, what we're doing. It actually makes sense. The funny thing is, Brittany almost didn't sign up for the program. I never considered it because I always thought I wasn't smart enough. Talk about shattering stereotypes. Here is a straight A student afraid she wasn't smart enough to be in the career and technical education class. Being in this program has changed the way I think about things. Every time I see something now, it's like, how can I fix this? How can I make it better? Solving a problem is the feeling of like opening presents on Christmas. What I was hoping to find were the polycarb side pieces that you need. That we could she add. found out that she was actually quite good at integrating the math and science to thinking with her hands at the same time. I try and use that thinking with the hands concept so that students can actually use your eyes and your mind together with your hands to create solutions. So you're gonna bend flat, yep. over, across, back up. David so Campbell teaches down. engineering technologies. He was also named Teacher of the Year by the Ohio Association for Career and Technical Education. This class is full of makers. We're creating and making leaders in technology. For such a long time, we've compartmentalized education into a class of trig, a class of algebra, a class of English. The workforce doesn't compartmentalize our work. So the kids have these projects that they have to use all of their content from all of the classes they've learned. It's called application-based learning. And for this particular project, the students are designing, building, and programming a robot for a competition that's just a few days away. In this classroom, there's no room for slacking off. It's so hard to tell someone how much you learn in here without them seeing it. If you did enter the room, you'd see students operating 3D modeling software, machining and manufacturing the robot's Some parts, to give yourself okay. the rigidity. wiring and programming electrical controls, even building and programming a system for human-machine interface. Think NASCAR pit crew, and that's what we have. We have a, a sports mentality to our contest and what we're doing, but it's really the mental muscle that we're flexing. I'm very passionate about pushing the educational envelope wherever I can. That included forming a partnership with Sinclair Community College in Dayton. 
and that's blossomed into, hey, let's offer an entire associate's degree in high school to students that qualify. Brittany is one of those students. In May, I will graduate with an associate's degree from St. Clair Community College in Mechanical Engineering Technologies. That's more than just another feather in her academic cap. The financial aspect of school is definitely the most important to me because I don't want to be crippled by debt. I would almost we all have a lot of students who leverage their career technical education to help pay for and support their post-secondary education. It is not a CTE or college decision that CTE and college go hand in hand. In high schools, every single student who goes through a career technical education program has the opportunity to earn college credit in the technical area that they're taking courses in. School districts pay for the courses and textbooks and offer other opportunities for tuition reimbursement, resulting in millions of dollars in savings for Ohio families. It helps them minimize the debt that they take on while they're pursuing their next step in their career. Student loan debt is a serious issue, nationally and in Ohio. Almost 70% of Ohio college grads leave school owing, on average, more than $30,000. One study even ranked Ohio as the fifth worst state in the nation for those carrying the most student loan debt. We have career technical education programs in every part of the state. The challenge there is getting moms and dads and kids to see that as a really a great option. In places where we do a good job doing that, man, parents and students are banging down the doors to be parts of those programs. There are wait lists for students to get into programs. Successful communities have great families, they have great schools, and they have great industry. The companies need to be involved with the schools, and the schools should open their doors to, the, to those companies for that influence. A lot of the companies want to retain skilled and talented workers to become skilled and talented managers that move on to become the figureheads that shape industry for us for years to come. The Talent Pipeline Initiative at the United Way of Greater Cincinnati is working to connect those dots. They bring industry partners and schools together to give kids earlier exposure to Ohio's in-demand industries. We really are trying to engage as many of those K through 12th graders to have a career-based learning experience that gets them hands-on and lets them explore across those five sectors. It gets them connected to those industries so they understand how important those industries are to this region. We want them to be proud of the amazing history in the Cincinnati region. And that's a challenge I say to students all the time. So what's gonna be your contribution to that story? The employer partners are key to all of this. Clippard Instruments Laboratory in Cincinnati is an example of a business that cultivated close ties to local schools. We realize that education, education, education is what's going to get us the best employees. The company manufactures pneumatic supplies and controls, used in a range of devices, including dental and medical technology. The owners are not afraid to spend money when it comes to having the best technology. Equipment's no good if we can't get somebody to run it or program it. That means putting resources towards developing new talent. We have not come across employers who complain about the cost of helping train the future workforce. Is it an expense? Absolutely. But there's also a great return. One of the ways Clipper develops talent is by offering cooperative learning arrangements. Students earn money while they learn, and Clipper gets to train young talent with an eye towards hiring them in the future. What it is is the longest interview you'll ever have, but we're going to be interviewing you for the next six months, and you're going to be interviewing us. One of those students is Brittany Ashcraft. In addition to taking high school and college classes simultaneously, she also spends four afternoons a week at Clippard. I am being moved from all the different departments. For the first two months, I was in the machine shop, being trained by all their machinists to work mills and lathes and bandsaws, and I even got the experience to watch some CNC machines and run production on those. 
I want to learn as much as I can is honestly, that's my main goal. That's Clippard's goal too. Maybe one day she's going to be the one running one of these departments. At the moment, she's assigned to the assembly area, learning how to put parts together by hand. As she learns how to do these things by hand, she's gonna be able to figure out how to, to make them automatic in the future. Automation. It's a word that triggers alarm bells for people worried about the future of manufacturing. The industry has been on the decline, but it's an oversimplification to just say robots will replace people. Automation means fewer of the low-wage jobs that are dirty, dull, and dangerous. But it will create jobs for highly skilled workers who can design, build, and maintain automated systems. We realize that we have to stay with the millennials of the world, the Gen X, Gen Ys. They all want to be challenged. If I can align somebody's passion with a need for Clippard, we're going to have a lifelong employee. That passion is on full display throughout the Columbus Convention Center as the Skills USA State Championships continue. Learning styles are so diverse anymore, and that's what's so nice about career and technical education. Give them a chance to feel it and touch it. I really feel that you can't have an early enough exposure to your opportunities and your options. Advocates say it's important to spread the message earlier, but it's also important to spread the message equally. We have a great opportunity to right some of the wrongs of what was our former vocational education system. That means facing up to Votech's troubled history when it comes to people of color. For more than a century, educators commonly used a practice called tracking separating students based on perceived academic ability. We realized that a lot of students that were deemed not to be college material or students that were from lower socioeconomic backgrounds or minority students, they were all being pushed towards the vocational ed track. And that's where most civil rights activists and educators really had a problem. That meant limited opportunity to increase income or move into the middle class. By the 1990s, a shift in the economy demanded more professional and academic skills. Four-year college degrees led to better paying jobs, and civil rights advocates promoted those degrees to students of color. As a result of that and other factors, the number of minorities in vocational programs steadily declined, even though a 21st century shift in the economy has now signaled a return to career in tech ed. I think most career tech education programs, if they were being very honest, they would admit that they have a very large number of white males that are participating, but they do not have numbers of males of color or females participating in career tech and education fields. Meaning once again, students of color could face limited economic opportunity if they miss out on these in-demand, well-paying jobs for highly skilled workers. That's a problem for all of us. Poverty in a city is a problem for all of us. And what we have to begin to do is start to say, what type of education system do we need design for the digital age? Robinson's organization promotes structured career pathways to help students understand current options and future opportunities. We can help you attain certain skill sets while you're in high school, certain credentials and certifications that says that you're capable of doing X, Y, Z job. But what we have to do is change their parents' perception of what a career pathway could look like versus a college prepared pathway. Here's that pathway forward. At John Marshall School of Information Technology in Cleveland, Pathways start with students choosing specific courses with the school's curriculum. And there's a lot of choice in that curriculum sequence because we believe choice is extremely important for our students. If they enjoy it, they're going to do better at it. Here we move it one, two. John Marshall is the first high school in Ohio to focus exclusively on computer science. 
And the reason why that's important is because our jobs and our workforce are quickly changing. But our goal is to prepare our students for the jobs that will be out there. High school senior Kobe Ballard is a student in the cybersecurity program. Technology and IT makes me happy because there's so many levels to technology. This is like a tree, as many branches you can branch off to. I'm a selfless person, so just the thought of helping someone protect their information, it feels good. It's exciting. It's exciting. Early in his sophomore year, Kobe took a closer look at the curriculum options, and he decided to check all of the above. Why not? I love a challenge, and it was going to benefit me in the future. So I said, I'm going to participate in every opportunity they, they revealed to me. And then he told us how the pathway was going to look. He told us that he was going to do these courses and this internship, and he took our pathways that we had, three different pathways, and he said, I want this part, and I want this part, and I'm going to do this. Kobe also took advantage of the dual enrollment opportunity at Cuyahoga Community College. He started early, and when it got really hard, he started working really hard, and he put in the time. He put in the time because he loved it. Because Kobe is the first, he's putting systems in place, you know, learning lessons that we wouldn't have been aware of if Kobe wouldn't have said, hey, I'm raising my hand, I want to do this. So it's got to react fast. Kobe met so Professor Dennis Shutway in one of his college classes. He became Kobe's close friend and mentor. people that write software to support Kobe had an interest, and we were able to grab him. We were able to grab him in high school. And he is doing the things that I teach in college. However, when this happens, I'll be retired, and it's all you. Because Kobe started charting his path so early, he's now eligible to do something no other high school student here has attempted. He's taking the test for his A-plus certification in cybersecurity. We're starting at $50,000 a year for someone who has an A-plus certification, and that is absolutely huge. He's not even 19 yet. He's going to enter the workforce a lot sooner. He's gonna give back to Cleveland sooner. Kobe can continue to stack certifications as he works, and he also has 20 college credits under his belt. He's just the first. He's blazing a pathway for other students that will come behind him. There are lots of juniors and sophomores and freshmen watching him. I always tell those around me, friends, anyone older than me, stay curious, just stay curious and ask questions, and you will find something that you, that you will like. If anything makes Kobe special, that would be it. He found something that he really enjoyed, and he ran with it. Definitely one of the very first ones. I'm just being Kobe. I'm just a regular person in this school. I don't feel important. I just feel like I'm just a kid that's doing something different. The one thing we know about millennials and the next Generation Z is that they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. After a demanding day of competition, winners are being announced at the Skills USA State Championships. talk to parents, I'm like, why wouldn't you want to increase the tools in their toolbox, their resources that they have to use outside of just that traditional degree? If I could wave a magic wand, the thing that I would want folks to know is that career technical education is truly for everyone. And goal goes to Penta Career Center. We are all reliant on the CTE world. If you can show companies throughout this country that in the state of Ohio, that in Cleveland, in Columbus, in Cincinnati, we will prepare the talent of the future. It's about economic viability. It's about economic advantage. So how do we build a bigger coalition? How do we build a bigger ecosystem of partners so that we are able to hit every school and truly get that message out to every family and to every student? Vocation is something we're passionate about. And I believe that I still love that word, vocational education, because we, we express some passion about what we do. It's amazing to watch these students' faces and see, oh my gosh, this is, this is what this is about. I, I understand.
every time you're opening one door, you're actually opening 10 more. The opportunities are endless. This program is a collaboration between IdeaStream in Cleveland, CET in Cincinnati, and WOSU in Columbus. To learn more about the many pathways to career success and find a toolkit for easy classroom or community engagement, visit any of the websites you see here. This program is part of American Graduate, Getting to Work, a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.